Well, 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 we are back at it again. Day number 101 for the Daily Dose. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for being here. It is a beautiful afternoon here in the metro Atlanta area. And for our scripture today, we're going to be looking at 2 Kings. So we just wrapped up the book of 1 Kings. 2 Kings starts right now. We do not have a supplemental video from our friends at The Bible Project. That's because... Um, for the previous video for 1 Kings, they kind of went through 1st and 2nd Kings. So we do not have a video for today um, from them. However, if you do need to get a link of our PDF plan that kind of walks us through what scripture we're reading on what days as we go through the Bible over the course of the year, you can find a link to that down in the description below. So where we will find ourselves today, 2nd Kings 1-3 through 3, and Psalm 101. We start off looking at the Lord's judgment on Ahaziah. Okay, so after Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. <clears throat> Ahaziah ends up getting injured. He sends people to ask uh, to ask of Baal if he will live. Elijah finds out and basically prophesies, "Hey, not only are you not going to be healed, but you're going to die in your bed, homie. It ain't going to go well for you." So Ahaziah sends his people to go bring Elijah to him. Elijah ends up calling down fire on, on these messengers um, that, that Ahaziah sends. So Ahaziah sends another set of messengers, and Elijah calls down fire on them again. So finally, there's a third sent, third group sent from Ahaziah, a third group of ambassadors, if you will. And, and they say, please, please do not strike us with fire. Please, please just come and agree to speak to our king. Come speak to Ahaziah. So <clears throat> they ask politely, and Elijah is going to go. So he goes, and he prophesies to Ahaziah's face. Um, Ahaziah dies, and we find out that he did not have a son. So Joram succeeds him. Now we read about something that is kind of peculiar. We read about Elijah being taken up into heaven. Okay, so if you will remember, um, God told Elijah that he needed to go get Elisha and kind of train him up, teach him how to be his successor, okay? So now we're coming to the time where um, Elijah's journey here on earth is, is pretty much over with. But he doesn't die. He does not die in the normal sense of the word. Um, he gets taken up to heaven. So Elijah gives final instructions and encouragement to Elisha, and then he is whisked away in a chariot of fire, right? So there's this thing that looks to be a chariot, and it's flaming, and it's on fire, and it comes down, and it gets Elijah and just takes him away. So presumably, Elijah was just translated directly into the presence of the Lord or into heaven without dying, which is peculiar because in Hebrews we are told that it is appointed to man to die once, and after this, the judgment. And Elijah, as far as we know, was a man. And if he was a man, he's got to die at some point. And there is speculation that Elijah um, will actually come back during the end times that we read about in the book of Revelation as one of the two witnesses. So if you're curious about that, I encourage you to go do some research on your own. Go Google it. See what you can come up with. So after that, we read uh, about healing water. Uh, the water had gone bad in the area, maybe because of the drought. Um, they don't really make it clear per se, but Elisha performed a ceremony and healed the water supply. Um, and then we read another kind of peculiar story about Elisha getting picked on. So Elisha is walking down the road. Apparently there is some, some boys, some troublemakers, rebel rousers on the side of the road, and they are jeering him. They're poking fun at him, making fun of him, talking negatively, cursing him, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, two bears jump out of the woods and devour these troublemakers. It's kind of a weird story. So from there, we read a little snippet about Moab revolting. So Joram had become king of Israel. Um, this happened in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. Okay, So again, down south, Jehoshaphat was the king over the kingdom of Judah. Okay, In his 18th year, that's when Joram becomes king up in the north, in Israel. And from there, 
we read that Joram did evil in the sight of the Lord, right? Seems to be kind of a common occurrence. Joram did evil in the sight of the Lord. Um, Moab had been having to pay high taxes to Ahab, and this is where the revolt comes into play. So after Ahab died, Moab basically rebels. So uh, the northern and southern kingdoms join up to go to battle against Moab. Um, they seek a prophet to give them advice, and they end up going into battle and slaughtering the Moabites. And that's kind of where the summary drops off for today. Uh, my point of interest I wanted to touch on just briefly comes from our psalm for today, um, chapter five, or excuse me, verse number five. It says, Whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, I will not tolerate. That tells us something about the character of God, and that tells us something about God's concern for our integrity, right? It's not just about whoever slanders their neighbor, but who slanders their neighbor in secret. Do you talk about people behind their backs? Do you talk about your neighbor in secret? You know, that's, that's not good. That doesn't please the Lord at all. And the Lord says in this case that he will put that to silence. And it says, whoever has haughty eyes and a proud heart, God won't tolerate that. Is your heart proud? Is it puffed up, beloved? Don't let your heart be proud. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. As we read here, God will not tolerate a proud heart. So um, go about your day today. Examine yourself. Are you slandering your neighbor in secret? Do you have a proud heart? If you do, ask God to help you with that. Give it to him. But until we meet again, friends, that's all I got for you. So deuces. Hope you guys have a good day. See you later.